My mom told me not to talk to strangers on the internet, but I'm glad I didn't listen. We are the Certified Nunas, your sisters in the love of Asian entertainment. Hi, I'm Amanda. I'm Jesse. I'm Natalia. And I'm Skye. And we're back again. That's right. Everyone's favorite segment, what we were watching, where we talk about all the stuff we're watching and what we think about it. I know normally, previously, we would do our little who picks, like little, you know, Siri would tell us what we're ordering, but we did it before, and it turns out it's age order, so it's going to be your standard. We're also doing things differently. We're following our yes. news nuzz uh, thing where one person goes, and then another person goes, and another so person be, goes, and another be, person goes, instead of doing, doing our little... normal chunk of, you know, like Amanda yeah. giving her entire list and then moving yeah. on. So. Yeah. So we're, yeah. we're, we're mixing it up. We're having yeah. a little fun. Switching being, it up on you. We're being, a, we're being a little wild and crazy <laughs> these days. We're trying to see. Who knows what the not. Nunas are going to do? The Nunas are keeping it fresh. All right. Sure. So, <laughs> yes. Fresh. I don't know. Listen. <laughs> work with me here. No. <laughs> You're like really leaning into your age. You're like, we're so fresh and cool. So hey, fellow yous. How's <laughs> it going, my compadres? Uh, all right, Amanda. What is a show that you're watching? I was actually surprised to see that I'm not watching a whole lot of new. I am, but like a lot of it's stuff that I already talked about, the mm-hmm. be melodramatic and Inspector Koo and all these things that I should be done by now, but I'm not. So anyway, I, I'm not. But I did pick up my liberation notes this week, and I'm really enjoying it. It's the same uh, writer as my mister and another Oh Hey Young. Um, and it, you can really see the connection to my mister for me. Like it's not, it's not the same at all, but there are some aspects of it that are, are similar and, and the sort of the concept of like adult siblings and adult siblings who have friends that they've been friends with since they were children and the way that that combination works and how they're all connected to each other. So I did see some discussion about people worried that uh, my liberation notes was depressing. I can kind of see where you would get that from, like Mm -hmm. where you would think that. And it is, it's not easy. Like it's not an easy watch. The first couple Mm -hmm. episodes I found really difficult to watch, but not in the same way that my mister is difficult. Like Mm -hmm. my mister is violence and depression and just overwhelming sadness. Mm -hmm. And I think um, this is just... Uh, the way I described it to some people in one of my group chats was that where my mister is a sense of people who are trapped in a, in a life that they have no choice about. They're trapped and they're, and they're trying to get out of the trap. My liberation notes is more people who are stuck, like mm. just stuck in a rut. Yeah. And it's about them waking up to the fact that they're stuck in a rut and wanting to get out of that. And like, How do I make changes to, like, Mm. get myself out of this? I think there's also a lot of, like, it's more of, like, a generational look on everything, especially because there's a lot of, like, focus on what makes it hard to be a worker today than it is for the parents, especially when your parents are living out in the working, you know, like, labor jobs and and not in the city and the kids are. Yeah. Yeah. So if, if you're not familiar with the show, the premise is about three adult siblings who all work in Seoul, but still live at home in the in the country, like an hour, hour and a half, whatever, outside of Seoul. They live with their parents who their dad runs a factory where he builds like kitchen cabinets and is a farmer. So he works real hard all the time. The kids work hard too. They've all got office jobs in Seoul. And it's a big commute. And then there's a, like a sort of farmhand factory worker dude who kind of wandered into town one day and rented the apartment house down the street and works for their family. He really did just kind of just wander kind of. in. <laughs> so um, it was a sign. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like they're hinting towards other things, but like, yeah. I, I, you, uh, definitely get more of his like struggle of him being having been a city worker and coming into this as opposed to having lived in that kind of town and you know life 
so does it have kind of I hear the generational thing, but does it also kind of show the big difference between kind of the rural work and then the city work and kind yeah. of that cultural difference it's too, just between the, those two The things? differences between that and just the differences between the parents joining any sort of labor workforce when they did versus what hmm. the money is worth now and how hard hmm. it is to do the things that yeah. you have to do now, even though to an older generation, it doesn't look like it's hard or like it looks like stuff that they shouldn't be doing. Also, the aspect of being an introvert and versus extroverts, like there's the whole thing mm -hmm. with that. Like Kim Ji Won's character is very, very introverted um, and very like just she works for a company that is very into group dynamic oh, to know people gross. like Ugh. they schedule the company schedules your tables mates that you sit with at lunch so no that they get to no. know everybody you also no. have to join a club no. at this death, company death you penalty have to join clubs. Death they penalty. all kinds of clubs mm -hmm. you can absolutely join the not club or the you know bird watching and so that's a big part of that that's where the title comes from my liberation notes is that um she and two other employees have not joined clubs and every week they get like called down to the mm -hmm. principal's office essentially to like try and find them a club and one week they're sitting there the three of them together and they're like let's just make up our own club so that we don't have to meet <laughs> yes. anybody else because it's like it's her and then and she keeps saying to them i live an hour and a half away then there's lee ki woo's character who is a single dad with an eight-year-old daughter or 12 or whatever she is but like <laughs> He's got a kid that he's raising by himself. And he's like, I have a kid. I have to go home. It makes <laughs> I was just about to say, and like, like you know, people with children. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. This Pants. job you're describing like, is my nightmare scenario. I, just like, it's, yeah. And her boss like, is a, is I would quit. Or, I'd be like, mm, no, I'm just going to get on unemployment. Like, I can't do this. Like <laughs> The third guy is just like, he has no excuse. I don't like people. I don't like people Fair. and I don't That's want to valid. do stuff. You yeah. come to work to work. You don't come to exactly. work. Exactly. Yeah, they make this little <laughs> introverts club and it's so great. <laughs> and, and they call it the liberation club because they're going to liberate themselves from this like Mark. stupidity. <laughs> Game the system. So they go have like coffee for 20 minutes after work and like <laughs> Super and they, sit, they sit at like a table like well, the, the window table, other. they don't face each other. They don't. They each sit at essentially like Chef's their own kiss. table with seats, empty seats in between them. Love it. Facing out, watching the street, but they do talk to each other, and everyone's like, "What is liberation?" And they're like, "I don't know." The one guy made something about like Korea's liberation was this, and we're liberating we're a history ourselves. club. You know, like, yeah. <laughs> they're like, we have to make it sound like it's real, but also super boring, so nobody else wants to do <laughs> yes. it. Thanks. No one else could join. Perfect. I'm looking forward to picking that one up when I have some time. Yeah, it's, it's on my list to pick up. I just wanted to very wait for there to be like a few it. more episodes yeah. so I could do like a nice, you know. It's, small I'm binge. Very... <laughs> yeah, like little mini binges, yeah. you know? <laughs> the um the older siblings are played by Lee Min Ki and Liel, and they're great in it. They're very mm -hmm. awkward and kind of annoying characters, but they're doing a really good job mm -hmm. with it. So it's like I like Leo. I don't really lot. like you, but oh, like man. I I like the way you're portraying these characters. Mm. I'm not meant to think you're charming. Like that's, that's not fair. really the character that you're playing. It's not funny, but there are fun mm. moments, and it's mm. not depressing, but it, there's sad serious moments and sad yeah. moments, and it's just. I, so it, the yeah. feeling of being stuck is it kind of a suffocating type feeling? Does it portray that in the show at all, really? Some, yep. Yeah, like it, it definitely, in the first episode especially, there's a lot of the commute shots and just a lot of stuff, especially of Kim Ji-won, just seeing her character being alone, being mm -hmm. alone in a crowd, always being alone, and just how that mm -hmm. begins to weigh on her. It accurately portrays yeah, her version. Mm -hmm. very much like, it's very accurate the discomfort is if you aren't introverted i you would pick up on that but yeah. 
Yeah. It, but it, it, would be, it would be a accurate. nice insight. Yeah. That would be yeah. a really good way to show it. I mean, yeah. and accurate. For me, the first episode or two felt very uncomfortable because they, I, I know that feeling, right? That I, that feeling of being in a crowd of friends and not really feeling like you're yeah. connecting mm-hmm. or making the, you know, so it was like, okay, I, I want to be entertained. I don't know if I want to watch me do stuff <laughs> like, <"Ugh." laughs> but, um, it, it's good. It, I enjoy. It. And then there's also like that, that difference of like living in the, um, the village versus living in the city, city yeah. and like how people she works with don't get it. I always appreciate shows that, yeah, show people that have kind of culture clashes because, like, that's mm-hmm. reality for some people too. And I think that it's important that some people realize that not everyone comes from the same background all the time. Yeah, yeah. So I'm really digging it, Jesse. What else are you watching? Obviously, you were watching that. What else? Um, yeah, I'm gonna preface this by saying I'm sorry. You might hear noise in the background. Tomorrow's thunder over Louisville, and I guess people are partying. Tonight. Partying. Like pre gaming, it's really loud. And it'd be what it be. It'd be what it be. It'd be what it be. Um, so I am watching a fair bit of stuff. I picked up some new shows because what do you do as someone who hates airing shows? You pick up more. You pick up airing shows. shows. (laughs) Right. And one of the airing shows that I picked up is actually a weekender. So I'm in it for the long haul and I'm finding I'm really liking it. It's called It's Beautiful Now. Yes. It is on Kokowa, so it's easy to find. So and, good. And subbed very quickly, so yeah. <laughs> you yeah. don't have to worry about that. The writer is the same writer uh, for, like, Record of Youth and Temperature of Love, so if those mm. are the type of shows you really like, you might like this. But it is a very rare weekender in that it's not, there's not a lot of, like, horribleness in it. And, and no. I mean, ho- <laughs> not a horribleness in, like, an overacting or, like, what I like I mean, bad people. writing I, yeah i'm talking about like actual like horrible people doing horrible things that you kind of like see a lot in weekenders because they yeah. you know they want that kind of they got that soap opera vibe yeah you know? they don't do that in this one essentially the uh story is about these three brothers who are all at various stages in life and they all have different jobs and stuff and their parents have this apartment just like hanging out, I guess, this really nice apartment because they're fairly rich. And they decided that they are going to move the, the boys along in finding their Why? significant others yeah. and, and creates this challenge that the first one that gets married can have this really nice apartment for free. Um, but, but it's very, it's so, it's such like a safe drama too. Yeah, you hear that like, you know, like set up and then you think it's going to be like vindictive or really mean, but it's like very sweet and nice. And like, it's just like the, you know, parents and the grandfather just like kind of having fun, but also kind of gently pushing them to do stuff, but, but not overbearing. Like I, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. they're the type of like parents that, I could see if literally one of the, the boys was like, I, my path in life is to not get married. They would stop They'd doing like, okay, everything fine. they do or doing that sort of thing. Yeah. So yeah. it's really nice in that, but it kind of just like follows them and their like perspective, uh, significant others and like the, the families oh. of like everybody and kind of like, you know, like just like a normal weekender, it follows mm-hmm. a ton of different people. Yun Shi Yoon is in it and he's essentially the lead in it if we are picking out of the three brothers to have like a one who's the main character character. um but he actually plays a lawyer a divorce lawyer and um that's how he meets up with the girl that he's obviously supposed to be like (laughs) you know (laughs) paired romancing Um, yes which is the probably the only part that you will see that like has an actual like kind of terrible thing because you see her ex who's really terrible a, and a abusive bad, bad man yeah. bad man yeah. um yeah. but yeah like i mean like so he already like doesn't live at home and is the lawyer and he's doing fine <laughs> this is why it's such a weird premise too because like obviously he doesn't need the the apartment he'll he's gonna be fine he has the monetary funds 
to live in another apartment and he's fine alone and he's a lawyer he's making money the eldest son is a dentist so he's already <laughs> doing well but he's in a lot of debt because he plays the stock market poorly and he's also a drummer <laughs> um, yeah the youngest son is like the closest to you know just being out of high school so it's obvious that he still lives at the home and he hasn't moved because he's like kind of working like you know normal like Mm -hmm. out of just out of school jobs but studying to be a civil servant the usual plot and they're getting so competitive like they like that's basically it like yun chi yun's just like i can't let you guys win but like in the most lazy way possible yeah he's like i'm not gonna like put a lot of i am literally only gonna put one toe in front of you and that's it it's so funny because they'll like they'll hang out with each other too they all have like a really good like relationship relationship and they all hang out with each other at night and they'll like put their hair up in a little little tiny little pigtails to eat so it doesn't get eating ramen and stuff it's so cute weird little hair i love that the the, but my favorite part of it is that they opened it up to all three of the sons, but they didn't actually mean the youngest son. Like they, <laughs> yeah. they, they don't want him to get married right now. Yeah. It's really just the two older sons. Cause you get the impression that the youngest son was like kind of a accidental late in life baby. Well, yeah. And he's like, like definitely like the youngest too. Yeah. And then like you have like Yoon Shi character is the middle child and he's mm-hmm. playing basically his age, which is like our Big age. 30s, yeah. Yeah. And then the eldest son is a, bit older than mm-hmm. him 39 yeah because yeah. they keep so making almost... a big deal about people calling him 40 and he's like i'm not 40, I'm 40 yet, yet. Like, not 40. Chill out. so it's like so those two are like really close in age and then you have like a 21 year old younger brother but the t- <laughs> my favorite part about it is that the parents release this and they're like and the two older <laughs> brothers like you know they don't mean you right like they don't they're <laughs> you're not gonna give you this apartment and he's like hey they said any of us so he of course <laughs> has like he's like scheming he's the only one who's actually scheming at all to like get this apartment with like yeah. his co-worker oh my god I, it's really it's it's, it's a lot of fun like i yeah. think if you don't like weekend weekenders this would be the weekender you'll really mm-hmm. like it, it sounds like a very accessible weekender yeah yeah it's yes. super fun it's, it's not really mock jangy or anything like you it's know, yeah like you often hear from people who don't really get into weekenders that they hate the mean parents, right? Like there's always a horrible mm-hmm. mother-in-law, a horrible. Every single parent loves their child in this. Yeah. Like yeah. they all love their children. They're all and they're not they're weird about it. It's not parents, yes. and they're great adoptive yeah. parents. There's like, it's just it's got every every parenting scenario. And Gramps is the best. The grandfather Gramps yes. is wonderful. And yes. then they've got like. <laughs> They've got all that, you know, it's like, here's a contract marriage, and here's an enemies to lovers, and here's the, like, they're giving you everything. Giving like, you everything. Every, like, every, everything, <laughs> but but not all the everything in a mock jong way. Exactly. No, no, no. Yeah, all the good things. Everything in a fun way. All like, of yeah. the girls that, like, are paired up with them, essentially, are, like people you're like, yeah, of course they would get together at some point. Yeah. yeah. Like, they're all, like, very, like, I don't want to say attainable, but like they're what they would be found, except for maybe the eldest some, but like her, it's very funny. She actually works with Yoon Shi Yoon's character. Yeah. So like she kind of got in because she starts really liking them. <laughs> his yeah, older she brother falls is for like, his devilish number and his drumming and is like, yeah. So, Good and I didn't times. mean to speak over you earlier, Jesse. You, no. you had said 50 episodes. I wanted to make sure that. Yes. That so l- just know that you're getting into it. But I will say that um, since it's on Cocoa, the subs have been very quick, very which quick. means that if you are aggressive enough, you can watch the two for free <laughs> when yeah, they show yeah. up on Cocoa. Because Cocoa does that. So. The 24 hours. The 24 hours like, within the release of something, you can it, watch it, and then it locks it. From what I've noticed, so Eastern Standard Time, the episodes usually post at about noon, and then the subtitles are there about three. Yeah. yeah. So I usually watch it in the evening. So. And I, if you're I, like, I, like me, I'm doing that, timer, that so that as like a thing. I'm like, okay, I am going to watch all 50 episodes of this. And I'm like yeah. using it as like my only one that I'm like on top of when it I, comes uh, out. Like, 
I might make it my first weekend or I think no, you like should. It, it's guys. really fun. It's really I mean, like fun. obviously, it's only like I think six episodes out currently. Mm-hmm. It could go anyway, but right now it seems very. And, and are they hour? The, yeah, the hour writer. ten. Yeah, like it is the writer from Temperature of Love, so I'm like a little nervous because I love Temperature of Love the first half, mm. and then the second half kind of derailed a bit so i'm like but you like never know like why a show fun. derails like, with it, right i mean like it's exactly. also I mean, it's like a weekender fun. too so you have a lot more in characters that yeah. have greater position exactly. so like temperature of love none of the side characters would get as much as like the parents are getting in a weekend yeah. or you know that sort of thing yeah. so i definitely think if you're looking for a weekender to try out this is the one Really, every single character besides her, the one girl's ex, has just been really great. Like, I love the girl that they have paired with the youngest son. She's so cute. She's so cute. She's she, if you were a penthouse fan, she was in all three of the penthouse things. But that's like it for her resume. <laughs> I like looked and I was she's like, oh, so cute. Like, but she's so great. Definitely check and it I out. Love if you're their liking. relationship. Like they're they're like best friends, right? Like he, yeah. mm-hmm. the youngest son, has a girl who's a best friend, and he's just yeah. like. Let's get this apartment and we'll see. Like, she's like, he's like, he's like, I got a deal for you. And she's like, Are you fucking crazy? Like, we can't do this. And he's like, like Or can we effortlessly like act like they have been together forever? It's like yeah. effortlessly, like, per- yeah. like they're perfect together. <laughs> like, so and they're great together. The actors are great together, too. Yeah. Like, found the chemistry that, like, between like, all the couples and all everything. Of them. Like, and, really and the fun. chemistry between the brothers themselves and the and their parents like the parent, and stuff. Yeah. yeah. It's delightful. So, for me, okay. So I started watching this Chinese show. Well, actually, I didn't start watching it. I watched the entire Chinese show over... It was only, like, a 16-episode one. So it wasn't, like, one of the massive ones. So I watched it, like, over a weekend when I couldn't sleep. It's called Dine With Love. And it's on Mango TV. Now, I need to say this because while I really enjoyed this show, the subtitling left much to be desired okay like it was you had to kind of figure out what was going on (laughs) a little bit so some of the stuff that i'm about to say might just be because the subtitles were a little lacking Mm, they were a little bit they're like a sort of a puzzle where you're given like half the (laughs) framework and like yeah you have to to like kind of figure out the what yeah, so, saying. like, you have to look at the sentence you're given and, like, what's happening and sort of figure out what's <laughs> actually happening, you know? Because sometimes you're like, what the... F-? Anyway, I did manage... To, I really enjoyed the show, so I did manage to keep along with it. So, it follows these two main characters, obviously. One is the CEO of this company that does some thing food related it never i never could figure out what his company <laughs> does but something that he does is that he has to appear on this like cooking show for like pr purposes for his i think food app of some sort company like food delivery i don't know okay it's never actually discussed he's just very good at his job and his company makes a lot of money. But he doesn't actually know how to cook. So he's been using a body double on this cooking show. <laughs> and, like, people have figured it out and are pissed about it. Because they're like, he's been lying to us. Meanwhile, there's this other, the wo- a woman who works at his company in the PR department. And her mother needs dialysis twice a week. So she never stays at work overtime, but she's worked there a really long time. But in order so that everyone who does work overtime doesn't get mad at her, she always cooks everyone dinner and like feeds everyone at work. So they're always like, oh, like, you know, we know that she leaves to take care of her mother, but she's worked there the longest of anyone in the department. So she has the most seniority, but she doesn't, but she's not like the top. Like she just wants to be in like, She's like, listen, I just want to make enough money to, like, pay my mom's bills and go home and eat dinner with my mom every day and go take her to dialysis twice a week. That's all she wants. So, meanwhile, after this whole thing, like, oh, your your company, like, you've, you've been faking knowing how to cook. He fires, like, this, like, PR, like, fire slash quits the, like, head of the PR department. So, he comes out. He's like, okay, who's been here the longest? And she's, meanwhile, trying to escape. 
right? She's trying to like leave to go home. Uh, and they're all like, oh, she's been here the longest. He's like, congratulations, you're now the head of PR. Like, uh, keep your phone on 24 seven. And she's like, what? Whoa. 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 so then she gets forced to like have to go like talk to like the show producer and be like oh no he's gonna like learn how to cook like he's gonna mm-hmm. cook for you know don't worry and all this and then she has to teach him how to cook and he's like your classic sundere but like kind of a dick until about four episodes in where he stops being that much of a dick as you find out his tragic backstory and all this. He also has, <laughs> it took me a while to figure out like how all of these characters were related because he, his best friend slash what I thought was his cousin runs a restaurant near this work where everyone, all, everyone goes to this restaurant all the time. But then it turns out it's not his cousin. It's actually his uncle and they have the same birthday because his grandmother and his mom were pregnant at the same time and gave birth on the same day in the same hospital. And it became like wow. a thing. Listen, me figuring out who was the uncle and like because of these subtitles, it took me <laughs> longer than you would think amount of time. To, I was like, okay, I know one of them's an uncle and one of them's a nephew, but I don't I know. I bet you're one. really proud when you figured it out though. Well, okay. You would think that, but then they actually went in and explained the whole backstory, and I was like... You need those well. relationship charts that, like, yeah. some of the companies do for, like, K-dramas. They're like, yeah. oh, this person's this. <laughs> so, a lot of food porn. A lot mm-hmm. of, like, eating porn. Not a lot of, like, shenanigans. Though there was this, like, this bit involving a Murphy bed that just kept coming up. That was just, like chef's kiss of like a good rom-com a, 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 a little mm-hmm. sexy spicy comedy where there, you don't actually ever see anything but there's always like but it's like an automatic murphy bed so like you'd like press a button and be like oh <laughs> i thought like you meant like they're in there and then they go <laughs> no, no, no. like literally yeah. just the murphy bed appearing because it's in his office so like the murphy bed appearing or like someone will accidentally activate the murphy bed and then of course like another employee will walk in while the murphy bed's down and be like oh, oh. <laughs> sorry <laughs> back on out. Know, i'm just gonna back <laughs> in the room like you know it was really cute i had seen the male lead i couldn't tell you for the life of me what show i saw him in before but he was really good and he has a very interesting face so i hope i see him again because like he has a it's like he has a very severe face, but like in a hot mm. way. I don't know. But I can't describe it. Uh, so that was really fun. And it, listen, as long as you can figure out what the hell's going on via like using <laughs> it to detect like deductive reasoning <laughs> skills <laughs> while you're watching it to be like, okay. It keeps your mind, mind sharp. Like direct yeah, translate. No, yeah. Yeah, because like it'll just like really direct have to be focused. <laughs> yeah, it'll like direct translate. Like it could be an idiom, and it'll just direct translate it. And you're like, yes, the seven shrimps fire ablaze <laughs> with the woman. And you're like, mm, what does like that mean? That Star Trek episode where they like meet the people who only speak in idioms or whatever. Yeah, and and like, like, the, you know, and it'll be like, okay, but what? But like, they're talking about shrimp. But in the scene, everyone is at a club drinking. Let <laughs> me figure this out. Anyway, it's or a really cute like, show. Yeah. I do what recommend it. What's it called again? It's called Dine with Love. Very low stress. Very chill. You, you gotta love the Chinese rom-coms. I was going for the so, really like, generic titles. <laughs> yes! And it was like I was expecting like I just wanted to watch something like stupid, but it actually wasn't. Like it was like the the main characters were at really least you interesting. think it wasn't because oh, <laughs> well, listen, I don't know because from what I could glean, it was rather <laughs> interesting. Um, my script that I made in my head seemed correct. Like, the, the translation <laughs> that I translated of the translation, depending on contextually what was happening, <laughs> seemed pretty cute. So. That's really funny. What about you, Sky? What have you been watching? What's the first show on your list? I finished up a business proposal. Yay! Oh, so, I think I was about a week or two behind just because I didn't get a, 
I had kept from watching the second half of the second to last week because mm. I knew it was a downer episode yeah. and I was like no no and so then it they always are yeah. to get back to it and so uh, you're like wait a second there hasn't been a dark turn yet what's going like, on oh, no. here <laughs> <laughs> and it, what, what's funny about had I actually had just got it really wasn't as near as bad as I had built it, it up hurt. To, you know yeah. sometimes when you do that like oh, I'm gonna save it it's like mm. I could have just watched it and been fine it would have been fine um I mean, I really enjoyed a business proposal. Like all the rest of the weeks, I had I had kept up on it. It was the main show I kept up on because it was just it was light, mm -hmm. it was easy, mostly predictable, I suppose. So but it was well executed, aware of itself that it's silly, mm -hmm. things like that. I mean, it was a very good rom com. Definitely heard good things for anybody. Who it was, was into fun. That. It was like yeah. just really fun, and like the stylistically, it was cheesy and fun and it didn't try to be anything besides cheesy and fun and predictable mm -hmm. it was like a very, very calm. zen drama to watch i appreciated how the lead girl's character you know it's not that she was a businesswoman it's that she really liked her food research job a lot like she just that was her passion and the fact that like so yeah, she ends up dating the CEO and stuff, but it, it was never on the table that she would ever not have her job. It, yeah. That was never a conversation. Of course she was going to have her job. It was obvious <laughs> it was important to her. They both loved food. It made, and that was another thing actually that like, I think really helped the things in common. sell their relationship. They both mm -hmm. really had a passion for their work, but also food. And so they actually had things to talk about and like mm -hmm. shared passions, mm -hmm. not just, hey, you're cute. <laughs> and like you're different from the other girls type thing. Yeah. Even no. though she was, she was an, an absolute goober the entire time, which was very charming. She's, she's hilarious. I love her so much. What um, I really like is every time you thought the drama was going to pull like a typical like drama move, the drama was like, no, 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 wait. Like, you know, there'll be the mini spoiler where the grandfather's like, well, you'll have to quit your job. And she's like, no. I, I would never quit my job or break up with him. I didn't you know that I was involved in all these successful projects? Like I'm gonna name all my successful projects, and like you'd be dumb to fire me. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, I'm I am an I, asset I, to this company. And he's, and he's right. like, I do not. Yeah, like the drama will actually take the predicted turn typically, mm -hmm. but it won't go far. And I'm not saying that any of it felt realistic necessarily, but the way they they would always kind of rise to the occasion, no matter what, mm -hmm. you know, they would resolve things pretty quickly, things like that. So that's why it kept pretty light. Also, drama aside, if you go look at all the interviews and stuff, even on uh, the swoon and stuff like that, like they're they're fun to watch interact. Mm -hmm. Definitely the they are. Uh, the two actresses. You can tell they got along so well, and they're like, I'm not saying they're BFFs, but like. They liked acting like BFFs and enjoyed each other mm. on, on set and stuff mm. a lot. So, That's nice. um, yeah, I definitely recommend it for people who are mm. who are into that type of a show. And I do think it's a great starter officey rom com for the people who are starting it on that sometime. Mm. So I'm glad it's on Netflix for hopefully some international folks that might just run mm -hmm. into it sometime. I started watching um, Cupid's Last Wish, it's a mm. Thai drama. Um, it's all completely aired, but it's dropping on GMM TV now weekly because it aired on Disney Hotstar and oh, not, yeah. you know, so Disney, do I have it on my Disney? No, I do not. So even though it's completely out now, it's not on my Disney, but I can watch it. For it was only on Disney too. in so, Asia. Yeah. Well, at least oh. they're doing it on GMM TV and not like, yeah. you know, yeah. all the other K dramas that are now trapped on Disney. So, exactly. So I do get to see it now. Um, I kind of get nervous about like tweeting about it or anything because I know that a lot of the people who like will have already seen the whole thing. So I'm like, I'm only on episode three. Please do not spoil me on mm -hmm. everything. But mm -hmm. at the same time, it's GMM TV. How spoiled can I get? Like it's an <laughs> earth mix drama. This is the same couple from Thousand Stars. Not the same premise, but once again, a woman had to get hit by a truck of doom in Classic. order to like 
get things going. Basically, the premise is Mix's character's family owns a farm. It's a big, I mean, a farm loosely. It's more like a ranch, like a, like a big old, like, ranch. And uh, they have kind of a whole business around this everything. Um, Earth is his best friend. He lives at the ranch. He helps run the ranch. They, you know, they do everything together. Um, Mix's dad dies and leaves shares. Basically, he leaves like, I can't remember what the breakdown of it is. He leaves all of his money to his daughter, but the shares to his son and his son's best friend and his like aunt and uncle or something. And you're like, why? Why did the aunt and uncle get it? They don't do anything. But I don't understand why the mom and the sister don't get I don't know what the plan is. Whatever. But Mix loses his mind over the fact that his dad left shares to the best friend who helps run this place. And he's like, you were just using me. You were just sucking up to my dad to steal my inheritance. Get out of our house. Stop being my friend. I'm never talking to you again. I hate your guts. And you're like, feel like you're like reel it in a little bit here, buddy. I feel like you're taking this a little too hard. Now, everything we've seen of these two up until then, I, I'm not entirely sure that they're not already dating, that they weren't already like, keeping it on the down low and dad was just like no i see you so i'm leaving shares to your husband because like gay marriage is not legal in thailand so like i'm taking care of you both right like it's kind of the way it comes across but like mix loses his mind kicks earth out of, and a year later still hates his guts still has not given up his grudge finds out that his sister's been chatting with this ex-best friend getting like business ideas Ooh. from him and stuff gets furious grabs her drags her into the car on a cold like rainy night swerving in and out of traffic and there is a car accident and when he wakes up he is in his sister's body and his body is comatose Classic. <laughs> <laughs> and his best friend is a doctor so his mom leaves the room and it's like earth and their other best friend, the doctor white with predictably bad hair. And he's like, okay, guys, it's me. Hi. It's me in here. This is not my sister, Lynn. This is me. And the doctor's like, clearly you've had a bump to the head, Lynn, and you're not, you know, feeling yourself. And he's like, you idiot in second grade. You did it. And he's like, Oh my God, it is you. I'm okay. So a Buddhist priest comes and he, he looks at him and says, like, yep, I see immediately know that you are not your sister. And here's what you have to do. You have to go across Thailand to seven different Buddhist temples and like drink the water of the blessed water of the wells of seven temples in order to get your bodies switched back. You should take your best friend Earth, whose guts you hate right now. Me like, meanwhile, meanwhile, like, what about the other body? Is the other body okay? It's, it's in other... a coma. It's in a coma. It's just chilling. <laughs> just just hanging out. Just, just relaxing. I mean, it's a grim reaper. Yeah. Be honest. That first episode, he is a terrible person. And I am like, right now, I just kind of hope that the end is he switches the bodies back and then he's still in a coma or he dies and his sister gets split he off later get better. Like, he's in the like shitty better. like situation. he's a terrible person and it was entirely his fault she's like, he stuck was, in the coma right like like she didn't yeah. want to be in the car and his sister's spirit is apparently nowhere to be found it's not like she's in the coma body like or waking up in her brother's body going, what? You know, like, we're not getting full body switch st scenarios here. She's just gone. You don't deserve a happily ever after. You killed your sister. I'm not a fan. So, anyway, it is GMMTV slash Disney, so, hey, it probably will all turn out fine in the end. Um, with, with every drink of the holy water well, yeah, stuff. Yeah, he'll, he'll get nicer. Who knows? Yeah. Who knows? It's, it's like Disney. Yeah. There was a nice bit, like, basically, Earth is like, Earth's character is like, I'm, I'm going with you. I'm going to drive you. I'm going to do this because you can't just go out on your own. And he's, and he, and Earth says to him, 
I know you don't like me. I know you don't want me around. But could you please care about your sister just a little bit? Because you don't have to care about yourself, but care about your sister's body and what you're going to do to it. But I'm, I'm struggling every time I watch it because when you watch it, it's just like they're not generally showing the, the mm -hmm. actress, right? It's always the actor. And I just keep in my brain like watching it like it's a sequel to A Thousand Stars. So like the first temple they go to is up like you have to go up like a thousand steps up the side of the mountain or something. They're on like step 600. And I'm like, this is not good for his heart transplant, right? You're like, wait, 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 like, wait, 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 wrong wait. show. You didn't have one in this one, please. There's no heart transplant here. Right, right, right. Okay. But apparently the sister is, you know, weak or whatever. So it is like, oh, she struggled to make it all the way up the stairs. And he's like, I don't know why I can't do this. It's because you're in a frail lady body now. No, classic. Uh, classic capers. So. Classic. Anyway, uh. I mean, I love Earth. I, Earth Mix have great chemistry together. They're great friends in real life and they're fun to watch. So I, I'll keep watching it, but it's it's really annoying to know that it's all out and I still have to watch it one a week. Like, yes. just drop that. Give it okay. to me. I'm Vicky sure does can... that, too. I don't feel like I've been watching that much. And I do have, I have dramas that are other dramas that are completed that I could just, you know, buckle down and binge those. So I'll be patient. I'll... <laughs> It'll be fine. So I started watching this Thai show called Remember 15. It Ooh. aired, I think it stopped airing at the end of March this year. It's a thriller, one of their kind of like teen thrillers. Um, I think View was the one to produce it, BIU. Mm -hmm. And it's essentially about a group of friends who are all tied to this one girl who during high school, she committed suicide and it's been like five years and they all mysteriously get a note from her and they're like, what's going on? And basically the note gets them all to go onto this Island, the Island that she died on mm -hmm. and things start to happen. <laughs> um, <laughs> a lot of death. <laughs> And, and, and so basically they're just, they're trying to figure out like really what happened, what was like really what pushed her over to like commit suicide and who was doing things. Cause they all have like different relationships with mm -hmm. her. There was like a sex tape that was released, but then there's also those younger sister. There are the like bullies who didn't like her. Cause I think she was also like the, you know, top of class and that sort of thing. She also had a, like an overbearing uh, dad and so each episode essentially is like one person just getting off offed and they don't know what's going on they don't know who sent the letter if it was her there's kind of like this supernatural tie-in too but they never at least at the point that i am have never officially confirmed that's a like a supernatural tie-in to it not the best thing in the world but if you're really into like kind of thrillers it's good. It's a young cast. I mean, I think I when I was going through all of their profiles, I think like at least half of them, this is their first credit mm. in acting. I will say that it. I don't watch enough Thai things to know things, but if I know that a lot of people really like Cutie Pie right now, Pruck, he's in it. And, Z. Um, and then they're like the drama. Why are you? I saw a bunch of people from the cast. Mm, yeah, in it. And various main cast to just like supporting cast and that sort of thing. But yeah, if you if you're looking for like a thriller that has like supernatural but also a lot of like death and a little <laughs> bit of gore, it's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, all the death, all the gore. Yeah, the death and gore. I mean, like it's also like you know, it's a teen show too, so it's like purposely for teenagers as well. They're all like on the island, like just being stupid with each other classic <laughs> like classic like teens are. oh as teens do oh, you know. <laughs> doing as teens do but you know whatever speaking of thai shows i'm watching quite a few of them right now but i don't even know which one to go with 
I guess I'll go with the tuxedo. I finished the tuxedo literally today. Uh, it's on Gagulala. It's only like eight episodes and they're only like 20 minutes a piece. And I get why they called it a t- the tuxedo, but there is nary a tuxedo to be seen on this entire show. <laughs> I just need to, if you were going in looking yeah. for that sweet tuxedo fit, you're going to be... I really sorely wanted to be Sailor Moon. Like, sorely thing. disappointed. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Sailor Moon. <laughs> so basically, the show is about this guy who runs a tailoring shop. And he befriends this guy who needs a suit for a job interview that he's going to. So then the job interview is to be like the personal secretary of this very ill-tempered guy um, who never leaves his house and this ill-tempered guy well after hires him and only hires him because he likes his suit because he's been looking for the perfect suit for his dad's uh birthday party that he's hosting because he never leaves his house but then you find out that like the guy who owns the tailor shop refuses to sell him a suit because his dad ripped off his dad so, so the dad of the guy who never leaves his house ripped off the tailor's dad once upon a time. But then he's like, no, no, no. I, I need you to make me a suit. All these other suits, trash suits. Just absolute garbage. And uh, then there's like, oh, no, they're hot, sort of, <laughs> you know. Uh, but a lot about, like, then, you know, you find out that he's like, oh, he's the illegitimate son of his father. So there's like stuff there. And like, it's mostly, it's really cute, but it's mostly just suit porn (laughs) and yearning for various scenes, but a lot of nice suits. Like if you like a good looking man in a suit, the tuxedo might be the show <laughs> you've been looking for. As um, long as you're not looking for the tuxedo. As long as you're not looking for a tuxedo. If you're looking for only it's suits. Tuxedo mask. <laughs> well, <laughs> but even tuxedo mask did wear a tuxedo. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> there, there but were, like if I'm tuxedo. looking for the character tuxedo mask. Like, listen, one of the, the, the guy who plays the, uh, the agoraphobic hottie could, I could see him being a very good tuxedo mask. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. But the, the chemistry off the charts, like the tailor's like the sweetest little bean you've ever seen in your life. And he has like these two younger brothers, one who has a mullet, just absolute chef's <laughs> kiss of a mullet. It's really nice. Like, it's just, it's just, it's low, like just. You know, it what what sort of the only thing that bothers me about the show is that it could be a full length show. Like, there's enough content there. Like, when you find out about like their various backstories and like there's enough like side characters that have like interesting stuff going on that like it conceivably could be like a full sixteen episode hour long episode each show. But it's I feel like it was one of those like we didn't really have enough money to make. <laughs> We spent all of our budget on this one house and all of these great suits. So, like, we got to do what we got to do, you know? Um, but it's on Gaga Lala. And it's it was really nice. It was just a really nice little watch. Much better than many of uh, the other Thai shows that I'm watching at the moment. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm watching some wild stuff. Let me tell you, YouTube these days, the stuff they're... It can't be monetized. It can't be. (laughs) But uh, yeah, no, the tuxedo. Very, very cute, despite no tuxedos. So I will talk about soundtrack number one. Oh, Oh, you found it. Uh, Yes, on Disney. On Disney, (laughs) yeah. You you watched it on Disney, right? Yeah, sure. Um, So (laughs) I I won't give any spoilers, so don't be scared. Um, But it, it is a tight little four episode drama and it very much centers just around the best friends to lovers concept he's a photographer she's a lyricist so that's kind of the tie in to the music stuff and it all just starts with she has to write a song about unrequited love or one-sided love one or the other and she doesn't get it because she's never been in that situation. 
And you immediately see the best friend being like, oh, I'm in that situation. Let me help you. Because, like, it's obvious why he's in that situation. But she doesn't get it for a very long time. And they grew up together and all these things. It's very sweet. But I really, really did enjoy their friendship and the way they showed that for, you know, even halfway through this four episode drama. Like, I mean, they really did show the friendship for quite some time. And then even flashbacks and things like that. I just really recommend it whenever it's more widely available for those of you who like being <laughs> super you legal get a what's... membership. <laughs> when... Just release these things to us. I don't know how many times we have to say it. We'll pay you the money. We already do pay you the money. Just Literally. Because, I mean, it's it's been done Korea side for what? Yeah. Two to three weeks now? It's been done. But I mean, I really, I did enjoy it. Uh, The actor and actress did a great job. Mm. And they even had um, the chick that is currently in Our Blues. Short hair. No, no. no. Um, The fish. Oh, oh, the the, She was in Parasite too. Yeah, she played the, yeah. What is her name? So she plays the main character's mom in... Mm. Soundtrack number one. And she's in a couple of episodes, but when she is, she's really fun. And she has a tarot card deck. But she was great. And soundtrack number one also had kind of a chill vibe to it. And, you know, sure. some yearning going on. It was good. I want people to watch it. Maybe. <laughs> We've seen her in many things. And she's yeah, always she's very great. good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so even so, when she showed up as the mom, I'm like, ooh, yeah. Then, like, <laughs> you know, she didn't get just like two lines. She would like get to be there for a scene. I'm like, yes, you get to do something. So hey, for a four episode drama, pretty good. She got some mm-hmm. time. And then there is also a boss person. And he's the guy from <laughs> the fact that I can't even think of the drama name. Soundtrack. It's okay to not be okay. The boss guy from It's Okay to Not Be Okay. He plays a boss guy in soundtrack number one. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, typecast in there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and t- very typecast with the having a crush thing too. Again, so, <laughs> these things happen. <laughs> Listen, he, he likes the vibe. He'll do it again. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. And he always yeah. does a good job. He sells it. So yeah. I really do. I recommend it. For people who dig that type of thing. Well, I mean, we've pretty much run through all my currently airing uh, stuff. I, I, I'm still watching tomorrow, but we've talked about that and yes. talked about it and nauseum, talked yes. about it some more. It's still good. It's still working for me very well. So um, I'm still watching Be Melodramatic. I don't know why it's taking me so long. Like, it's, it's all out. It's an older drama. Not like old, old, but like it's but so, like, you can watch it all and you're not waiting for subs. Yeah, I'm. It, it's one of these ones where I sort of forget that I'm watching it. And then I'll be like, I'll go to put something on my drama list. And I'll be like, oh, yeah, I'm watching that. <laughs> and I'll go put it back on. And I don't know why I'm for it. Because, like, when I'm watching it, I love it. Like, it's, mm. it's great. Mm-hmm. I was watching this week, watching it and watching my liberation notes and thinking about how they're sort of flip sides of the same coin in a sense like it's got that slice of life thing going on too and the friendships and the and everything but it's sort of like the rom-com version gets more through the rom-com filter a slice of life Mm -hmm. through a rom-com filter versus a slice of life through a like more mellow filter Mm -hmm. or you know it's it's an odd show it's an odd show i really dig it but it's weird and like the base premise of it is is that there's this writer who is striking out on her for own for the first time and she's the lead on a drama and they constantly throughout everything keep talking about how her drama is a weird drama and they the company that is producing it and stuff like they don't really know where to slot it and it's not it's not like other dramas and it's weird and you kind of about halfway through I'm thinking like is the writer describing this show that she's writing right now because this is also kind of a weird drama that doesn't Self seem to fit, you know like it it feels like maybe this is something she heard from people a few times when she was shopping this story around but it, it's good there's all these characters and all these 
like potential romances. But they could also not be romances. They could all just be friendships that stay as friendships. And I won't be mad about it either way. And I'm not really sure where it's going. But I'm okay with it. it it's it's odd. But it's enjoyable. And the actors are all great in it. Um, I laugh. I cry. Like, I had some unexpectedly, like, strong, like, deep, Emotions. stuff going on yeah that i was like oh okay we're here now okay cool but then there's also like just super funny bits and there's so many side characters and the side characters get their stories and stuff mm. like it'll it goes it delves into these little things that you know would be a throwaway but like now we're getting flashbacks of that side characters like high school experience and and how it brought them to this point and you're like oh okay cool so yeah it, it's it's really odd like it's it's odd because it's not even like you know like with something like tomorrow where you're getting these new little characters that just come in for like two episodes and then they're gone it's like a an ensemble where there's like a central core group and then there's like a surrounding group that would normally be just the supporting cast and they would you would only see them when the main characters are there but then suddenly you're seeing them doing their own thing and like at home or in the office or something when the main characters run around and you're like oh okay we're getting stories for these people too now which is kind of interesting and neat and it's kind of nice in a sense to if you're going to create all these well-rounded interesting characters to give me a little bit more of them so not mad about it and i'm yeah i'm just really enjoying it so i don't know why it's taking me this long to get through it sometimes but... sometimes it just it just be, yeah, it just be sometimes, like sometimes sometimes you pull a taxi driver and that's okay <laughs> <laughs> exactly oh, so wow. yeah. <laughs> So even though I have a ton of stuff to be watching, I did what any sane person would do and decide that you need to work on things on your on hold list. Of course. Okay. Of course. A little bit in tying with what you just said, um, I picked back up The Crown Princess, which is a Thai mm. show that I started uh, back like when it aired. That was in a while ago. <laughs> Back in the day. That um, was a it's, while it's ago. Just been hanging <laughs> that on. was a moment. Which reminder, go check out our, yeah, like, oh, our, our episode on our, it. Our case. Yeah. I don't know why um it's taken me this long to watch it. I like it enough that like picking it back up after like a two years, I still remember every bit of it. I know like maybe why, but it doesn't actually like pan out this way. Every episode is two hours long. So I think when I like think about like picking it up, I'm like, it's two hours long, but there's never been once uh, I'm on episode 10, there's 12 episodes. Mm -hmm. There's not been a single episode out of those 10 episodes where I didn't blink and the episode was done. There's never once been a time where like those two hours just didn't like just fly by and me go like, but I need more. It's <laughs> whatever equivalent of a what, Lackhorn Mokjong about court politics that are just it's so good <laughs> it's got it all it, it really has it all like and especially like the the girl who's like it was primed for it to take over the the kingdom she's like the coolest person in the entire world like the first episode literally she gets kidnapped and you think that like the hot army or military guy who's coming to like get her save her is going to be it no she literally just like gets out of like the chains and like beats up everybody in her path and then swims <laughs> like hundreds of miles and she's like basically like black belt like can take anyone and everything and then they just become Love this it. like fighting duo and then there's you know amazing brothers and sisters and relatives who are all like trying to kill each other for the throat it's so great <laughs> so if you can fight it, it it's really good um, but also, in a, like, another thing that I picked up really uh, fast is, uh, and I actually finished it because it's small, and I just had it on my list, Pearl Next Door. So Pearl Next Door, mm -hmm. I think, like, if you're looking for a GL, you should watch it. 
it is like a companion side story to the Filipino show Game Boys, which mm-hmm. is on Netflix here in North America. It's on America. Netflix in Canada too. Okay. Yeah. And potentially it's been on my drama list for a while that season two is supposed to happen midday. I don't think that's happening, but like there's a there. movie. But it's not the movie. Oh. No. Yeah. This no, is, there was supposed to be a This is supposed to be something well. premiering season two mid bay. It's it's actual season two mm-hmm. and it's Scheduled for 2022. The movie was 2021. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But essentially, it's about this girl named Pearl, who is a influencer, YouTube type person. And she kind of gets trapped in a love triangle. The thing that makes it interesting is that it was at the height of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. So almost the entire series is done through her talking to the other characters through like um, Zoom meetings. Mm -hmm. And so they're all like, separated because of that and it also works really well because there are parts in the uh, episodes where she like does her little clip for her show that she has it's like the most extreme in that type of show that i will go for and honestly if it wasn't a gl i would have dropped it but i think it's really cute Mm -hmm. i personally haven't watched game boy and i was fine um Mm -hmm. i'm pretty sure that there's probably some things that i didn't catch a lot of not a lot of the characters. I can't say that. I don't even know any of the characters in Game Boys. But, like, the, her best friend, who I assume is one of the main guys in Game Boys, is in sh- in the show. And you see her, him a couple times. And they're super cute together. Hmm. Like, they're just great. And I, there's some, like, things that happen that I, I really like, too. And it's really cute. So, if you're looking for something, that's on YouTube. Very short. I was watching it when it was airing. But I remember very clearly it was one a week and they're like half hour mm-hmm. things and I was like I can't I can't just like wait like for this I'll just like put it sidelined in and then I forgot about it so okay I'm gonna quickly do two as well because they're sort of related in a weird way that's why that's why I did the, those two I was like oh. yeah so the next two shows that I'm watching are both on YouTube the first one is called Secret Crush on You it is a Thai show and it is the hottest mess I have ever seen in my life. Like, I don't even know where to go with this show. It is wild. It follows these groups, this these, this friend group of, like, four people. So it's like, there's weird glasses kid. There's cool girl who you have no idea why she hangs out with these other three. There's extremely effeminate, over-the-top effeminate, uh, you know the gay friend and then there's like the cute quiet one but the weird glasses boy has like a secret secret crush on the coolest guy in college because it takes place in college but he's not an engineering department they're all in like <laughs> the communications what? department so they've Shocker. really branched out on this one <laughs> um and so he's like super weird and like collects stuff that this guy has like touched like it like trash like literally like is like picking up like leftover coffee cups and like putting them in like air sealed bag like he's fucking weird okay but meanwhile like he's caught the eye of the hottest guy in school as well like some how guy has strange taste listen no account for taste good for them uh so it's just literally it's the most just shenanigans based oddball over the top i don't know what to do with this show and i don't it's one of those shows where i'm like this show is lucky that i don't drop shows because <laughs> like it's not bad enough for me to like not watch it but it's not good enough for me to recommend it to literally anyone that i know but there's like something weirdly compelling about it and actually i know what's weirdly compelling about it it's the second couple which is the cute quiet friend and the best friend of the hot guy but the show does something that really annoys me so the cute quiet friend is like maybe 15 pounds heavier than every all the other guys on the show but for some reason everyone thinks he's fat mm-hmm. and i'm like no he just has wide shoulders and was like a round face like it's not fat but anyway it's like so he's always got this like weird complex like oh like this hot guy likes me but i don't think he really does because like i'm so fat and unlovable and you're just like in what world 
Like, no, stop this. Anyway, he's very cute, and they're very cute, the two of them. And then even, like, the effeminate friend gets a love interest, and it's like everyone but the girl gets a love interest, and it's just like, <laughs> oh. Of course. And it's like, it's even like, she, she, it's sort of comedic about it, because, like, you know, they'll all, like, wander off with their partners, and she'll be standing there like, really? After all I've done for you. Really? But there is a really cute lesbian couple as well, and and this is a fun little note, the show is produced by Saint uh, Sopapong, who's producing the Gap GL. So oh. the, the lesbian couple in this show is actually the pairing from Gap. So it's sort of like, I think Gap like starts teaser. after this one finishes. Yeah, it's just like, oh, they're coming back. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, this is semi-related in terms of like bizarre love stories that I'm just confused as to why I'm watching and enjoying them in a weird, disturbed sort of way. Um, the entirety of the Thai version of Love Stage was recently dropped on YouTube almost secretly. Huh. Like, they put it all on YouTube and then didn't tell anyone. Like, I only found out because, like, BL updates had, like, the Twitter BL updates had tweeted, like, hey, guess what? Love Stage is all on. I'm gonna be honest. I was already watching love stage because for some reason it didn't have an international release despite being based on a very popular Japanese manga which was also an anime which was also a movie like anyway you know how sometimes when you're watching a show the show can be really subtle about things um love stage decided to go in the entirely different <laughs> direction and be the most unsubtle show i've ever seen in my entire life like it's got like it's literally got a scene where the two male leads are like feeding each other sausages like breakfast sausages and i'm just sitting here like was this hey. necessary was this <laughs> <laughs> but it uh it has like a pair they uh turbo and Canal. Canal was uh, the villain in the first season of Tharntype, but the two of them acted together in uh, Nidimon, the uh, drama based on the God 7 fan fiction that was mm-hmm. shenanigans. Yeah. Um, and Canal is a really good actor, and Turbo is really trying. <laughs> so he's doing his best. Oops, sorry. He's doing his best, and he's very cute. My only problem with this show, it's one of those things. That it's just like, I shouldn't be bothered by this because it's so stupid for me to even be bothered. Is that I think that the makeup artist has a thing against Turbo because everyone on this show gets these beautiful filled in eyebrows. Okay, like these lush, gorgeous, beautiful filled in. And every time Turbo appears, he's got these sparse, pale little things. And I'm just like, who'd you piss off? (laughs) Who? Give him his eyebrows. He's a good-looking little man. Also, there's like a... in the Literally the first episode, so I'm not really spoiling anything. There is a cross-dressing plot where he has to be in this like wedding advertisement as a woman. Why is he the most beautiful woman on the planet? It hurts my soul. How beautiful this cisgendered male is as a woman. Anyway, the show is stupid, but it's fun. Like, it's... It's stupid fun, you know? It's all on hey. YouTube now. And fun fact, this is just for Jesse. Uh, they, in the last episode, they used uh, Good Time with Scar's time lapse music for, <laughs> for like a like running montage. Like, and, <laughs> no, and I was dying laughing because, so Good Time with Scar's from a YouTube, so you, Minecraft YouTuber who's on like a server. And this is not the first time a Thai show has used the same music as a Minecraft YouTuber. And I'm just like, why does this keep happening? Like, <laughs> they're, so, They both subscribe to the same royalty-free service. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was just like, oh boy. So anyway, that's, that's like basically my list at the moment. So, I mean, I still have a handful of things to get through. Go but a couple it. of them, A couple of them I can just easily. So a couple of two of be it. BLs together. Um, so I finished up Cherry Blossoms After Winter. Um, so well acted. Um, cute. Pretty simple, pretty cute. I will say it's unfortunate that like midway through there is a bit of like, I'm trying to think of how to explain it. 
the the taller fella he ends up like pressuring the guy some and not not to like awful ends or anything but mm. and he ends up being remorseful and apologetic and all these things however it's not really something i was expecting in this he gets a little cold in one scene he, he got mm. pretty aggressive and pretty and you know the whole like oh i'm kind of butthurt that you didn't immediately say yes you no know, there's it was mm. there there was some manipulation going on it didn't go very far but I was not necessarily expecting that within the realm of this very sweet, simple show. So I thought it was unfortunate. And it was something that I'm not going to just forgive that because it's cute at the end. Like it was, yeah. it's one of those things that like, that's actually a red flag and you shouldn't then be like, yeah. okay, let's be in a relationship. Like you really shouldn't. So yeah. anyway, I found that unfortunate. So like, if you wish to watch it, just know that that's on oh. there. Again, that doesn't go like super bad, but mm, sir. And then I, I watched the man who divides the world, defies the world of BL two. <laughs> There's not much to say about it except for it's just a really weird little show. <laughs> um, like and the first one. <laughs> to me, the main difference between the first season and the second season is they changed the opening song dance. Delightful. Montage. Delightful. Um, I, I don't even remember what the first season like. So they had a certain type of costume thing. Was it was it like the first the season first was like like a seventies disco. Yeah, it was like, disco, solid yeah. gold. Yeah. So then they went like kind of more greaser. Yeah. Side. Oh, okay. Season two, like big doing a Yankee style, hair, like the yeah. big tattoos and ripped vests and leather pants and very very silly. So like. It just continues on the exact same shenanigans as season yeah. one. I mean, that's all it is, but always a good time with that. Mm -hmm. And I can probably squeeze in the fact that the reason I talked about Taxi Driver earlier is I finally finished Taxi Driver. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> and I really did enjoy it. But yeah, it's good that I waited because I had to be in the right headspace to be like, we're going to now go after everybody. Mm -hmm. you, know, you have to be ready to put on those really big knuckle dusters and go after everybody. And now you're ready <laughs> for whenever they drop season two. Or Yeah, yeah. I, I, I kept thinking, I better finish that like the next few months. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I really did enjoy it, but I don't think that shows necessarily for everybody. You really do have no, to be okay no, with whatever no. level of violence you really mm. do. Especially when they're all based on true stories. Yeah. 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 So I the... actually did have one question about that. So I know that Jesse had mentioned that they shared multiple true stories at the end. Mm -hmm. So I only caught one. It was like the second to last episode. It was finally like, oh, like I, I finally saw because usually I don't like seeing the previews and that's why. So I went back yeah. through all the episodes that were on. I think I was watching on Vicky. Mm -hmm. Cocoa. I was watching on Cocoa. Anyway, I went back through and I tried to find the other ones because that one said it was number three, mm. like hidden story mm. or something. I couldn't find the other two at the end. Of the, like, I mean, I really made sure that I went to the, all the end. And so it was strange uh, that I wasn't able to find them. Yeah, I don't know off the top of my head which episodes they were. Because it was literally, I was just like watching or like, you know, I just like mm -hmm. let the credits play out. and then it So happened. I wonder if I just really goofed because I went back and I like I tried to find I wonder if they did them. stuff where like it looked like it was in between the credits like it was like looked like it was part of the credits and then it played it and then it finished out some credits but it yeah, didn't necessarily like I wonder mean that. I wonder if I if when I was checking yeah. I wasn't checking you know so mm -hmm. yeah so if you're looking for that it might be hard to find but if I definitely you're know looking for it maybe I'll put it in the links I did do a <laughs> blog post with all the true stories that okay Yes, you did. Perfect. I forgot. Pair with everything, but yeah, and it's just not fun. It wasn't fun well. like a blog post to do. Let me just say, I I can don't imagine. know that I'll do that for the next season, but yeah, very very heavy stuff. So yeah. definitely don't think that Taxi Driver is like a light shenanigansy type mm -hmm. revenge. It's since they do deal with true stories and things like it's it's pretty heavy. So I can talk about one more drama that I think. We should talk about um so i did start our blues mm, yeah i just mentioned briefly <laughs> because of the lady um i am not caught up with it but it did premiere since the last time that we talked so mm -hmm. i figured i would talk about it a little bit um it's on netflix it is the one with like absolutely every person that you ever want in, in one 
big cast. When I saw that cast list, I was like, for real? Ridiculous. For real? It, okay. It's also, um, just if you're wanting to know, it's a little bit longer. It's going to be a 20 episode and it fits with the show because it is very much a, there's a bunch of characters. They all have like stories and not every character is fully tied to each of the other characters. So it's not like, you know, something like 39 where you get the backstories of stuff, but they still have the time where they're sitting together all together. You have it a little bit because they're all on Jeju and it's small and, you know, they're, there's one, you know, couple that were high school lovers. And so they're getting back together. So that sort of thing. But like a lot of the time it's kind of like separate stories. It is the same writer as uh, It's Okay That's Love. If you really like it, actually, the, the both the team, both writer and director team. They also, I think, also did live together, live together, live, live, the police show, you know, the that show. One. The police one, <laughs> not the hospital one. Live, yes. Live, I, think. <laughs> yes. I think it is live. <laughs> live, live. <laughs> it worked. Both the, the pronunciations work for that show. So it's always like, I don't know. It is slow. If you don't like slice of life like if you don't like my liberation notes you will hate our blues 100 percent. it's also a lot more um about hardships and stuff i haven't gotten to it but there are like parts of it that i tiktok wrote like spoiled me a little bit on something they go into issues and stuff that like that too so it's like all about their like lives and like living on Jeju Island and, you know, struggles of working and then doing all that stuff. Um, but it really does. It, it has like, who is in it? Uh, like Byung-Han is in it. Shin Man, Shin Man, Min Ah is in it. Woobs is in it. Woobs. Um, woobs. Um, back. Um, Han Ji Min. There's like a couple of like younger characters. Uh, one of them is, oh, what was he just in? I can't remember the one of the like kids was just in a show that I just watched. It was like, Oh yeah, it's you. It's kind of ridiculous. <laughs> the star cast that they got on this. And it makes you wonder about crazy. the budget, like the, that, yeah, yeah. just that budget alone. Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess they, like in terms of like sets or like special effects or anything, they don't have that, you know, it's just, it's really yeah. is more slice of life, but it's, it's definitely going a little bit harder into like more darker things mm -mm. um but like real life darkness not like made up stuff so i definitely think if you are into that sort of thing you should like a slow paced mellow mm. life mellow but like my liberation notes is definitely happier than this but it's still like the same tone too it's like very weird i watched both of them when the first episodes dropped, because they're both also on the same days and on Netflix too. So it makes it really great. Uh, but like, I was just like, these are for the same person. Like mm. both of them are for the same person. Like, and that person is Jesse. Is what yeah. I yeah. really <laughs> love boring shit or like very emotional shit. <laughs> and like, here it is. <laughs> so, I mean, like we haven't even gotten in the two episodes. We haven't even touched on everybody's, story too so it's mm. gonna take a while just through like a bunch of the stories because a lot of them are like you know the episodes are focusing a lot more heavier on one person and their background and what they're doing i am excited to see how it progresses i don't think a lot of other people are excited to see but that's okay yeah. <laughs> that's fine. not every it's show yeah. i've seen a lot it's of fine. it's so slow it's so yeah it's not for everybody slow, right and i'm like okay well yeah I, and i thought you know Right now, that's not for me, but mm -hmm. like maybe oh. I'll check it out. Later. I mean, if like, you really like Jeju Island, this is your, your I, show. Yeah. And I mean, I want to support Woops in his comeback. Yeah. So, you know, and I mean, Woops. he's barely been on. Woops. Yeah. Yeah. So, what, one thing okay. I sometimes Woops. like is seeing shows like this. It does shows your kind of real Jeju Island. Yeah. Like no, the, this is absolutely like, like, obviously, we don't know, but like, it's definitely that's how you feel. Right. It's, it's, what, like I can't even like think of like a show that I can tell you. It's like you know when you see those types of like uh, movies that kind of focus on the small town mm -hmm. with like the the group of high school friends or whatever, and they come back together or like just like you know towns that like they really only have like 
one thing that's like going for them and like Jeju Island really is like you know the fishing population and stuff and so you like everybody knows each other just because you can't have a a, a like personal life in that small of a community because it will get around but it's not like you're spending all your waking minutes with another person too mm -hmm. but everybody probably went to high school together or were taught their teachers taught every single one of those type of people you know like the small town type mm -hmm. you know dramas yeah. or movies um but i really like that i like you know yeah very character driven slow stuff so yeah mm -hmm. it's fun and it's on the same nights or days as my liberation notes kind of works out getting your, your... yeah i mean i don't want this like listen yeah. i don't want to weigh watching things that are like airing but it's on netflix so it's like when it's there it's there, there. but did you have more stuff sky because i did okay Go Does anybody it. have any more stuff? I don't really. Like, have I can any. be I'm super just, fast. Uh, I'm just watching Cutie just... Pie still. It's still adorable. I have a lot of stuff that's just like kind of on hold that I've only like watched one I, episode of. Yeah, I kind of pulled a bunch of things. I went to my on hold list to like, okay, it's getting crazy, and I pulled them off, and then just watched an episode and dropped them. I was like, no, <laughs> okay, <laughs> we're done. We're done. Like, Wake Up Ladies Two. I was so looking forward to that, and I like tried it and paused it and then I tried it again I was like no this is not like the first season I'm out bye yeah. so you know I had a lot of those mm. this month so. mm -hmm. <laughs> since we were talking about Netflix I'm gonna just quickly mention a couple things I did watch on Netflix um Yaksha Ruthless Operations the oh, movie I thought um, on my list was it was good yeah so just serious spyness. I thought it was really good it was mm -hmm. a good time um and great acting mm. action all that. I was super stoked for Celeb 5 Behind the Curtain. I was oh. let down by Celeb 5 Behind the Curtain. Oh, no. 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 I so forgot it was I, on. No. I, I figured it. it was going to be maybe some behind the scenes stuff leading up to at least a little bit of like a stand up moment. The entire thing was behind the scenes of them ramping up for their Netflix show, like to film their Netflix show. And they show them getting on the stage, and that was the very end. Oh. So maybe, so I'm wondering if at some point they'll release it. And they did, you know, they would kind of workshop some of the jokes that they were wanting yeah. to do in it. And some of them, so uh, the, the leader of their little group, the oldest one, she was the one that was just so nervous about, like, you know, is that joke going to land internationally? You know, all these things. And they, they'd be like, don't worry about, you know, the other ones are kind of a little bit more free spirited with stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And then the one chick that's always on SNL, she was always trying to have like inappropriate, like boob jokes, which was really funny. <laughs> like, you know, so there's, it was, it was still silly, but like they were ramping up and then it ended. So like, if you want to be excited for Celeb 5, I hope that someday they'll release yeah. that mm -hmm. thing that they were working on. So kind of odd It'd and be maybe because be. i was too excited for it i should have probably not been like so jazzed mm. or something and i would have just taken what i got so those are the two things i watched on netflix i wanted to mention um astros rocky is currently in a web drama called broke rookie star or salty idol whichever one you want to call it free on youtube cool. he's playing a struggling idol and the tiny premise is pretty much it was a group that got popular and then he's a member that got added to it and so like everyone's oh, fans no. of like th these two main guys in the group and of course he has like zero fans because he's mm. new it's very silly but some of the struggles and stuff there was this one moment that was funny he was trying to get divert someone's attention he goes chan woo so then like they got distracted and he ran away <laughs> <laughs> but he gets he gets very animated he gets to share because he's a goobery person he sh shows all of his gooberiness in the show so it's fun i've watched half of grid now mm -hmm. grid's grid <laughs> grid's grid <laughs> grid's grid it's really grid's hard to grid. like talk about grid without spoiling stuff like mm -hmm. but like mm -hmm. almost accidentally because you're like i don't know what's you, you you have to be okay with some level of sci-fi. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. So if that's I kind of like jam, put that on hold because I wanted to watch it freely. Because mm -mm. it got to the point where I had like watched a bunch of it and I was like basically at the airing part. Yeah. 
And I was like, mm, this seems like a bad idea. I need to be able to like it, I didn't get binge it, but I saw someone that watched the end and they're like, I still don't get it. So I'm like, we'll see. We'll Maybe see. Maybe I'll get it. <laughs> yeah. I did hear that it's set for a season two, like that that's maybe the way that it's it's done there's a huh, that would be interesting yes. did they already like film it because yeah because he's, so, he's just so doing the military and um, <laughs> the face is definitely been out and about like she had this like yeah. big gig in switzerland for a couple weeks or a month i don't know i just i know i saw somebody talking about it on twitter today or yesterday just saying I it, they said they really enjoyed the show. Curious what will happen in season two. So I don't know that there <laughs> is, oh. or if they just think I, that, that sounds like they or, think it could be a season two. Like you know, they're not going to get it so, for a while unless it's like air yeah, or like completely unless they filmed. And I don't think they. I think they pretty much ended mm. these filming like, and then he left. Yeah. Like I think yeah. it was a very quick turnaround. Shut up, Flower Boy Band. Yes. Pick that up yes. Again. <laughs> so I think so that's all on YouTube if you're looking for uh-huh. it. Um, and they have it in three or four chunks per episode. So you get like 15 yeah. minutes. The classic way to watch K dramas. Yeah. <laughs> but at least at least the subs seem pretty solid as far as I'm concerned. You can put like in a playlist too. You could like throw it all and watch later yeah, and just but, like, like mm-hmm. yeah, it's right there. And uh so I think I'm only episode four or five, but I'm really enjoying it. No, oh, we love good. it so much. It's so good. And, I love that song. The-, the song is like the best, and you'll hear it like through the theme. Five hundred times. Yeah. Don't worry about it. <laughs> you'll you'll it's learn. It's good though, it. so it works out. Yeah. And they're all such puppies. Yeah. They're, they're all really. such puppies. Even the main girl. Oh, you're such a puppy. I see you all the time now. And I do I have to mention it because I have to. Uh the American show that I watched was Our Flag Means Death, and yes, I know it's good. on HBO Max. But you know it's about pirates, so that's that's something to note. Um, so really good queer representation, really silly, but mm-hmm. really joyful. Really good in the silliness, mm-hmm. and yeah. So you enjoyed it, Natasha? Did you watch I did. the whole thing? I did. Yes, <laughs> very fun. So I encourage everyone to find that. The fandom is really sweet. Like all the actors on Twitter, like they they retweet all the fan mm-hmm. art and things, mm-hmm. and they're just really mm-hmm. cool. And then there's specifically one actor who um, they are non-binary in real life, and they play a non-binary character as well. And so they talk about that a lot on their Twitter and stuff. So it's pretty yeah, neat. they're really cool. Mm-hmm. That's cool. So had to throw that in. I will and- be quiet now. And Ken Porsche is an ongoing thing for I think oh, a yes, lot of us. Like, listen, Ken Porsche. It's, yeah, but like we're also in this together now. You know, it was Thai New Year, so we had the one week that it wasn't. Yeah. In there, so, so, that, so like we we had our time that we talked about a lot. Then there was like what episode? And, now we're <laughs> and then another. there was a break because of Songkran. Yeah, but it's back. So yeah. <laughs> back. we'll resume today chat or tomorrow. Next, yeah, tomorrow, tomorrow, as of when we're recording this, not as of when this releases Mm -hmm. speaking of the day this releases if you are listening to this on the day we are having a live stream tonight on the day that this releases uh we're gonna be talking about all the stuff coming up in may that we are excited for Mm -hmm. and so we want to hear what you're excited for so come hang out with us on our youtube and always just check out our youtube like subscribe you know the usual youtube nonsense we're doing a lot of stuff over there we're doing at least one live stream a week we've got some crazy good times planned uh Mm -hmm. sky and i recently tried our hands at uh, managing our own idol group sky was much more concerned about money (laughs) than i was and i was very stressed because it was we were one step away from bankruptcy at every every moment (laughs) it's a lot of natalia just clicking things just clicking without things. <laughs> and panicking <laughs> clicking panic, clicking, being like, oh god uh, and she'd ask a question and then she wouldn't wait for like the delay and then she'd just go with stuff and i'm like literally it just came in now the question so, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's it's a stressful it's a stressful experience but it's fun um yeah. we've got some really fun stuff planned this month uh coming up so we hope you come hang out with us there uh in addition you can find us you know always on Twitter and Instagram are our social medias. That's so always at Certified Nunas. And of course, we have our website, CertifiedNunas.com, where all the links and stuff and all that goodness can be found for every single episode we've ever done, which is a sizable catalog at this point. We are mm-hmm. prolific. 
podcasters. Yeah. We've been at the game for a while. And the people who appreciate our game the most are our found family over on Patreon, who are the best ever. Um, so it's patreon.com slash certified newness. If you want to become a member of the found family, we do little extra things over there. We have a, a found family movie night every month. Uh this month we're watching Pipeline. It's going to be super fun. Uh, anyway, we also have a Discord where we just chat and have a good time and talk all things Asian entertainment. So we hope that you join us over there as well. Anyway, we hope you have a fantastic week. You stay safe, you wear a mask, you wash your hands, and as always, keep enjoying Asian entertainment. Bye! Bye! Bye.